<laughs> All right, so here we are with uh, lesson 9.1. Um, again, yesterday, the first lesson was actually 9.2. We just kind of went out of order. Um, but again, these go in the exact chapter section order of the book. So if you're ever wondering why the numbering system is the way it is, that's why we're doing that. Uh, KDISD teaches this unit first, even though it's chapter nine in the book. So just, again, for any reason, maybe you're confused by that. That's the reason why. All right, so reflections. We are basically going to be reflecting over specific lines. Now, those lines could be things like the y-axis line. It could be the x-axis line. It could be a different vertical line or horizontal line. And we'll refresh like how those equations look. Um, also in this class, we'll reflect over, I refer to them as like the perfect diagonals. So like if this is your two axes, the perfect diagonal y equals x, where it's starting at zero, up one, over one, we do reflect across that line. And we could also reflect across the y equals negative x, perfect diagonal. But in this course, we are not going to flip over like a random line in space um, because it does get a little bit more tricky. So quick things here. This just is kind of mentioning that if for any reason, and usually this is a situation if we have like a shape that's got a lot more points in it, and we ask you to reflect it across, let's say, this line. Um, if the point lands physically on the line, that that point will be in the same location after the reflection because it's like on the, the mirror, it's on the point of reflection. Whereas any other point, according to the definition, is the perpendicular bisector. Um, but I don't really want to get into that vocabulary too much right now because that's more of a fancy geometry term when we get into later things. But essentially, bisector means to cut something in half. Um, and so what they're basically saying is that this distance is equal, um, which of course makes sense, right? When I look at my mirror in the morning to see my wonderful face that if I'm this far from it, my reflection is going to be the same distance. Like as I walk closer, my reflection gets closer, my reflection gets further. Um, so it is going to be the same distance from the mirror on both sides. It mentions perpendicular, which is an algebra term where we intersect at a 90 degree, that those two points, if you were to connect them and the original line do happen to make a 90 degree angle, right? So if I take a mirror, the reflection is going to be directly 90 degrees coming straight out from it um, and as I move that mirror, I'm always seeing what's 90 degrees straight out from it. But again, don't worry so much about that vocabulary. We're just saying what's on the line is going to stay there. If it's off the line, its reflection will appear the same distance on the other side. So let's start with just a quick basic general understanding. Um, when we move things, for example, this B, the reflection here, it says B prime. If it's hard to see that, it does have that ticky mark. So even without any discussion, I know that this is considered the original pre-image and this is now the new image based on that notation that we looked at last time. Another thing that should always take place in a reflection um, is that the points should match up. Like the closer two points should be the same letter. Like the, when these two points should be the same letter. Um, so the correct answer here is C, and I'm just going to kind of point out why. So like this letter, let's say B, is the same distance away as B prime. Same thing with D to D prime. A with A prime, and C with C prime. So we need to make sure that's happening. The other thing, and it kind of depends how, how your brain works and loves. Like some people can kind of fold things in their brain and get it. Other people, they like stare at it and squint it, and it doesn't work for them. So it depends on the person. Um, but you ought to be able to, in a reflection, always be able to pretend that you fold your paper exactly there and the points will perfectly match up. So to me, just glancing at these, choice C is the only one that looks like if I were to fold this, everything perfectly lines up. Um, but sometimes if you have challenge with that, one of the first things I do is look for those middle points, like C and B are obviously not the same. C and C, maybe, and if I have trouble seeing how this folds, this is D with B, well that should be the corresponding letter and it's not. Um, both of those things are important because if, for example, we had this same question here, like printed perfectly the same, but just the letters were off, that would be something that's important to check. So the letters need to match up, as well as the picture needs to look like a perfect folded in half reflection. Okay, so just kind of keep that in mind because you might look at this and like, oh, it's that one. Um, but if there were two that look like that, now the letters become important in figuring it out. All right, so 
probably the most important thing we need to look at right now is there are technically some like rules that you can use. Like if I tell you to flip over the Y axis, there's a rule of what you can do to the points. Um, we will see rules to this unit. Sometimes I do feel the rule is actually kind of faster to do if you know the rule or have it written down and have it memorized depending on what's going on. Uh, there's other times we're just looking at it, counting how many spaces and repeating it is way easier and less brain power, right? But again, everybody does things differently, so we'll kind of talk about that. However, I do not feel like there is a nice, easy to follow rule for reflecting over a specific line that is not the X or the Y axis. So we'll see that next where there is a rule for it. Um, so here, they've already drawn it for me, this X equals one. And so basically just take any point, any, mini, money, mo, I'll take this one, and it appears to be exactly one space from the reflection line. So we just repeat one space on the other side. And if I'm labeling that, that would be M prime. Here, K appears to be two spaces away on this side. So I do two spaces away on the opposite side, k prime. j, one space, so j prime is one space, and lastly, l, one space, one space. And if I were to connect all of these, and I did this perfectly and beautifully and wonderfully, when I look at this reflection line, this should look like I could fold my paper and all of those points would match up. Okay, so that is generally speaking what we're looking at there. Um, one friendly reminder, if you don't recall this from Algebra 1, we have horizontal lines are always written as y equals and whatever the number is. Let's say y equals 1 would have looked like going up one spot and drawing a horizontal line. This example, x equals 1, we would need to go over one spot and make that a vertical line. So if this question wasn't polite and drew that line for us and it just said x equals 1 or y equals 1, we need to know the difference of which one's which and make sure that gets placed correctly. Here is another one, basically the same thing. It tells me y equals negative two, so again, I need to know that y is basically go to the y-axis negative two, and then draw that sideways line. Um, I'll do this one kind of quickly, because really it's sort of the same thing, right? This point is one space away, so one space away. This is one, two, three, so one, two, three, etc. I'm not gonna finish this example just because it's the same as last time, and we're not trying to waste your time. Okay, so when I reflect across specifically the x or the y axis, there is a rule that says if I know the original x and y value, it's going to sort of land as the same numbers, but maybe one or the other sign will be different. Um, so I always think about it, so if the x axis is the line that I'm flipping across and I'm looking at a particular point, that that point is going to stay at the same x location. Like if this is over seven spots, it's gonna stay seven spots, but instead of going up three, it flips to down three. So that rule is saying, not that it's going to be negative y, but it's going to be the opposite sign of whatever it is. So if it's currently positive, flips negative. If it was currently negative, flips positive, that kind of thing. And then similarly, but obviously opposite, if we are reflecting over the y axis, we'll notice that the x value has flip sign, but the height has stayed the same. But just like last time, you are also more than welcome to just go one, two, three steps away, one, two, three steps away. So it sort of just depends. Um, if you give me a graph that's already printed on a quiz or a test, I tend to just count and count because that to me is faster. If you give me just a random point, sometimes I'll picture like, okay, X axis, the point is five, two, so it'll be five, negative two. I'll just kind of picture what's going on in my head or use that rule. But again, just giving you options, not saying that one is specifically better or worse than the other, just things you can think about. Next, we have the line y equals x. This is one that I kind of like the rule for if I have access to the points, just because it's really just flipping the order. So not the signs, signs stay exactly the same. The positive stay positive, negative stay negative, but the physical x and y flip. Um, and the result of that is us flipping across this diagonal. Um, now on a grid, you can't nest, well, you can, it gets tricky, depends what you're seeing, but it can be tricky to try to count diagonally to this line, whereas all of our other examples, you could perfectly count the boxes horizontally or vertically to the reflection line. Uh, but you will sort of observe that this physical distance is about the same. 
Um, there are ways to do that. For example, and I'll show you on a problem with an actual grid here in just a moment, but you can count, let's say I chose to count downward to this line, you would count like however many spaces this is, and you get to the line, go sideways that many spaces and you'll land at the point. You can also, and it's the same result, is if I walk sideways to this, now I would go vertically to it. Um, and either of those two ways of doing it will land me at the same point. And then of course, visually, you kind of observe, if this is my mirror, the point should have been about here anyway. So I kind of use that to help me know which direction to count. So maybe I'm not paying so much attention to like positive, negative, left, right, just visually where that needs to go. And so when I count like four spaces, I'll count four spaces towards where that point needs to be. Um, alternatively, again, you'll notice if I knew the point was negative one, four, using the rule, I just flip that to four, negative one. That might be a faster approach, okay? But at the end of the day, I always like to glance at it. It doesn't look like it reflected across that one. Um, so this page is just a recap of the rules. If the rules are important to you, reflecting over the x-axis, basically just the y-point changes. Here, if I reflect across the vertical axis, the x-point changes. And I reflect across x, y, this perfect diagonal, the y and x switch locations. The other rule that's not on here is if I go to reflect over the line y equals negative x, and I have points that are, you know, jumping across that, the rule for that one is similar to yx. You do flip them, but they are also both opposite sides. So what I mean by that with a super, super, super fast example, if I took the point, let's say two, four, so one, two, one, two, three, four, and let's say I wanted to flip it across the y equals x, positive y equals x line, then this location would be at four, two. Now we go one, two, three, four, one, two, and that would be how I would find that. Um, if, however, I wanted to reflect it across this y equals negative x line, the rule says, yes, still flip it to 4, 2, but also change both of their signs. And so negative 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1, 2 would be the location of this point flipped across that blue dotted line. Okay, so a lot to look at, but these are just the general rules, um, or like I said, you kind of just count and then repeat the count on the other side. So last example, I actually do one on a grid, just to show you a bunch of different things that could happen. Um, let's reflect, it's looking for the point A25 and B71. It says they're the endpoints of segment AB. We haven't seen that notation yet because it's actually a chapter one thing. Again, this is from chapter nine, but the little bar on the top means that it's a segment AB. So I'm not just going to draw the two points, I will also connect them as like a little chunk of line. Um, so the original points are what, two, five, and seven, one. So one, two, one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. Two, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. Ay, ay, ay. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. Oh my goodness, one more. Thank you for bearing with me. Two, one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. <sighs> okay. Now we can do the problem. I'm going to assume that these are all graphed correctly, but the question did say reflected across, let's say, the x-axis, the y-axis, all those different things. So if all I want to do is count and not apply a rule, we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, and then repeat that distance one, two, three, four, five. Here one, here one. Technically, if this was a quiz or a test, I would probably want to see these labeled as A and B, this labeled as A prime, B prime, and because it's a segment, this would be a connected, and so would be the reflected segment. So this is like a perfect example of what I want it to look like. Uh, the rest of these examples, I'm just gonna quickly move the points for you, uh, but that is the proper way to leave that answer. Here, this is two spaces away from the y-axis, so continue two on the other side. This was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Next one, diagonals. And these do look kind of like, the, but these are not the point reflected. These are two different points. The line just happens to kind of pass through the middle of them. Um, and so here is where choices, right? You can try and count diagonals. Like this point to here, if I go 
straight diagonal counting, it is like one and a half. So half and one, you can kind of count that way. The other way I was showing you was that you can walk whichever way you want, sideways or up down, but whichever way you walk, you're then gonna walk the other way the same number of spaces. So if I walked down one, two, three, then I would walk sideways one, two, three. Or if I go on sideways one, two, three, I would then go down one, two, three. Again, how do I know whether I go up or go down? It's that general idea of I know about where this point should be and I'm just following the counting towards that general area. So let's say I took this one and I wanted to count up and then over, I would count one, two, three, four, five, six spaces. So then one, two, three, four, five, six spaces sideways. Um, so if I were to fold this over, those would perfectly match up, okay? Uh, for the y equals negative x1, this would go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then sideways, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This one is, oh my gosh, um, let's go sideways first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The other choice, again, I'm just showing you these options. If you were going to use the rule that x, y, let's say flipping across the line y equals negative x is flip the location, also flip the signs. If this first point was at two, one, two, three, four, five, then the reflected point would be switch them, five, two, and also make them both opposite sign. And you'll notice if I plot that point, negative one, two, three, four, five, down two, that is the rule method of finding those points, okay? All of that's fair game. Uh, this one, again, just counts it. I'm not gonna do that one for you, okay? So as always, homework is available. You can check your work on that. Make sure that your name is on the top, that you take a picture and send that in for us. Otherwise, see you tomorrow.